It's cold, it's frigid, and it's scary as hell. Hey guys, so now we're on to the second day of all the films I saw at the Great Digital Film Festival. I saw over four movies yesterday, so I sat on my ass for almost 12 hours yesterday, and this morning I went out and did a trail run at this event that was this morning, and so I just went from one opposite to the other, so forgive me if I'm a little bit out of it, it's a little strange. Anyway, I would have done the videos last night, but Sean wanted to go home, so I'm going to skip the first one that we saw, which was Ghostbusters. I really want to do that with him because that's one of his all-time favorite films, so I'm moving on to The Thing. The Thing is still my favorite horror film ever. I like it more than Alien. I'm dead fucking serious. There's a reason why it's on the wall here! The thing takes place in the Antarctic, where this dog is being chased by these crazy Norwegians and comes across this American outpost. The Norwegians try to kill the dog, but in the end they get killed themselves, basically by the American self-defense, and they're wondering why did this happen? They go to the Norwegians' place and they find everyone dead. If they haven't killed themselves, they've burned themselves, or they've mutated into these weird corpses. While that's happening, this dog is walking around, and then when they come back, it turns out that there is something that is not human among them. It is a creature that can assimilate and take any form of any person, and they don't know who's human, and they don't know what is the alien. The Thing is my perfect interpretation of what a thriller horror is. The idea that there is something that is menacing after you, but you don't know what it is. The complete feeling of terror, horror, and not knowing what's going on. Have this mystery, this tension, constant tension throughout the whole film. I've watched this movie hundreds of times, and there are still things I find about this film that are amazing to me. There are still questions that I have, there are still ideas that I wonder what, who did what, and when was someone turned into the thing. Like, who destroyed the blood? Who was the one who got Blair? And all these things are just so awesome about this movie. The script written by Bill Lancaster is amazing. You can rewatch this movie tons of times and you still have questions. And that is amazing. I love it, considering how simple this movie is. It's even one of John Carpenter's favorite films that he ever made. And what sucks about it is this film tanked because it came out in the exact same year as E.T. 1982. So everyone was not really gung-ho about aliens that could turn into these awful monsters and eat your face and become you. They wanted the, you know, the one who ate the Reese's Pieces. That's another thing too, the special effects, the practical prosthetic effects for this film were a benchmark. Now some people even Roger Ebert even said that he, as gross as the movie was, he still respected what the film was. It was good. It was a hell of a lot better than the film that came out in 1954, which wasn't about the book at all. The book called uh, Who Goes There by John W. Campbell. This film is so well done. The score by Ennio Morricone is so basic, yet it's so tension-filled. Just this dun-dun, dun-dun. That's it! That's it! And, oh, maybe it had to look up. But that is it. This film is made so simple, yet it's so good. Kurt Russell's in this film, dude. Kurt Russell! This is like the peak of Kurt Russell time, and he is awesome. The characters are all really intricate, and you really get to know them in the, sp the time span of what happens on this base. And each one has sort of tells. There's parts in the script that there's, say, this one point where this guy tells them, watch this guy, watch this guy, and you kind of think that he knows what's going on, but in the end, he's actually wrong. And that's something that's one of my favorite parts about this movie is there's no clear-cut good person. There is Kurt Russell, who is basically a good character. He's right about almost everything in this movie, but he still has his flaws. And the film ends fantastically, too. I'm not going to give it away for those of you who haven't seen it, but this is honestly my favorite sci-fi horror film 
ever. I like it more than Alien. I love Alien, don't get me wrong. But the thing is a classic for a reason. It is a cult classic for a reason. It has amazing music. It has amazing tension. It has fantastic special effects. You will never look at a husky dog the same ever again. Sure, it's a little bit dated. Mind you, this film came out over 30 years ago, but it is still a absolute classic. If you have never seen John Carpenter's The Thing, watch it. That's all I've got to say. In the end, my final rating for this film is a 7 out of 7. If you've never seen this movie, watch it. It was fantastic to watch it on the big screen. Something else I noticed for the first time is that Doc had a nose ring. I never saw that in the Blu-ray quality. That's kind of cool. That's something that you also, if for those of you who haven't gone to it yet, and are thinking about going to it, watch it. Because when you go and see these films on the big screen, one, you notice things you never saw before, Two, you hear things you never heard before. And three, it's just amazing to watch them on the big screen, especially if you've never seen them before. Ghostbusters will come whenever I get Sean, uh, but I will be doing Mad Max uh, The Road Warrior next. So until then, guys, I hope you enjoyed these reviews. They're going to keep on coming. I'll see you next time.